Hey, I'm Isaac from Williamson, West Virginia, and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. Good morning, another new day is here. Wearing my Chevy hat. It's gonna be a good Chevy kind of day. I don't know what that means, but it's gonna be a good day. We're here at the rest area in Manitoba. And a couple other friends over there. Look at them, look at them. Rest area over there. One of our very few actual rest areas where trucks can park. We're gonna be headed through Regina, just like we did last week, and continuing on towards Calgary, Alberta, which is sort of north of Idaho, western Montana, up there in the west. We get there tonight, unload tomorrow morning, and then await further orders. It's been getting really chilly at night. Kind of freaky. Sort of makes me feel like winter's on the way. And if you look at the trees over there, in the distance, and over there, I don't know if you can see them or not, you'll see them throughout the day. They're changing colors. <sighs> Diesel, it's fall time. He's still got a pretty bad lump on the side of his face there, and it's going down into his throat. That's the saliva backing up. Uh, if, you, if you didn't watch the last couple of days vlogs, Diesel has a blocked salivary gland. So the saliva, I don't even know if I said that right, salivary. The saliva anyways, is blocked on this side of his face from getting in there. It's apparently is kind of common in dogs and it causes this. It uh, swells up and then it blocks and it backs up into his throat like that. The vet isn't concerned at all. He said it's no problem at all. He's got some antibiotics that he's on now and it's supposed to clear up within the next 10 days. But if it doesn't, he may have to go in to get it manually opened up, you know, with surgery. But it's not life-threatening, it just looks really awful. Poor guy. And to make it worse, when I'm filming this today, it's his birthday. His fifth birthday. These often you got stuff on your eyes here, I haven't cleaned out your eyes yet. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday, I wish you didn't have to deal with that on your birthday, I'm sorry. Oh man. Looks awful, doesn't it? But the vet said not to worry. But I'm worried. It's time to organize the cubby. What is this doing in here? Oh yeah, this fell off a trailer I was on once. Okay, yeah, we need to clean this place out. We should play a game called, what's in your cubby? <laughs> I've seen some drivers beside me in truck stops open up their cubbies here and they just, they get falls out they got all kinds of stuff in here i try to keep just the basics of what i need in here so being a van driver it would be different than a flatbed driver but what do you have in your cubby first off here i've got bolt cutters to cut the seals on the trailers that i have hammer you always need to have a good hammer with you oh what you want that to stay in there not fall out okay keep that all nice and organized you got triangles of course that's if you break down that's what you put behind your truck to steer traffic around you. Mostly in my cubby, as you can see here, are straps. I've got my inverter underneath here nicely protected so that nothing falls on it or anything. Uh, as I'm reorganizing everything here, the most important part, some Dello oil. When I was running owner-operator, this was the oil that I used in my truck. It's got uncommon toughness, just like they say. It's really good for cold starts in the wintertime up here in Canada. And, you know, like they say, it helps you to go further. It's the long distance oil for the long distance driver. It's always been my favorite oil. I would recommend it to you too. I've partnered with them for a few of my videos. They're a great company, good people running a show there, and they make amazing products. And I'm not just saying that, it's, they make really good oil. I notice it especially because in the cold winter. When you do a cold start here in Canada, you really notice when you got good oil in there and when you got bad oil in there. Other than that, <laughs> empty washer fluid jug. I thought that I had more than this in here where's all my wa oh I put the washer fluid in the other side okay well we need to throw this out so what I've got in there is I've got the anti-gel for my fuel at the back I've got oil I've got antifreeze and on my other side my second cubby this is where I've got all my washer fluid my broom the broom stick you always have to have a broom especially when you have a van trailer a toy for diesel for some reason okay bunk heater uh, the way this works is it sucks the air from here, takes it in here, heats it up, blows it through there into the cab so that I can have the truck off in the cold weather and it still stays warm in there, right? So that's what's in my cubbies. Now I want to know what's in your cubby. 
just arrived here in Regina. Uh, but instead of going up north towards Saskatoon like we did last week, we're gonna go straight through on Trans-Canada towards Alberta. So this is a little, uh, not quite halfway from Winnipeg to Calgary. I would say Moose Jaw is a little bit more in the middle between Winnipeg and Calgary. Still expecting on being in Calgary in about eight hours, plus breaks, eight, nine hours. Going a little uh, pull out rest area here, just before Medicine Hat. No, pardon me, just for Swift Current, I believe. We're still in Saskatchewan, but this little town sort of intrigues me. Like, look at this, isn't that cool? It's like an old, almost abandoned town, but people still live here, I think. It's like an old Western style town here. That's so cool. Some people still live here. I mean, there's a house right there. So all kinds of stuff like there's the town goes all the way out there and I don't know how many people still live here or not but it doesn't look like too many it's right between the trans Canada it's strange because you got the eastbound side on that side of town just going past over there and you got the westbound side on this side of town going over here so this is like right between the the highways, right? Oh, it's pretty neat. I wonder how his jaw is doing, or his... Poor guy. Sick on his birthday. On his birthday. Having a good birthday, man? That's his good side. The other side is still pretty swollen. Those antibiotics doing something for you yet? Apparently they take about 48 hours to take effect, so... I'm keeping an eye on it. Good boy. Five years old today, according to pedigree.com, that's the equivalent of 40 years in him. 40 human years. He's considered an adult dog. Next year, after he's six years old, he'll be considered a senior dog. You're getting old, man. Getting old, aren't we all? Just stopped in here at the Petrol Pass. Uh, medicine hat. Oh, apparently I can't get out this way. Uh, okay, uh, where's the exit? Ah, uh, I had two options and I chose the wrong one. 50-50. All right, let's go this way. And uh, we're in Red Cliff, Alberta. I was gonna say Medicine Hat, but it's two different towns. But they sort of, they sort of blend into each other. Red Cliff is a little, little ways away, but I don't know if I'd consider them two separate cities myself, but legally and technically, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, we stopped here just to clean the windshield off. It was so full of bugs. I can guarantee you it's gonna be full of bugs in 20 minutes again. But I couldn't even get any good footage out the window for you guys. So we got about three hours to the city of Calgary. Calgary's a big city. It's my favorite Canadian city. Edmonton is the capital of Alberta. Well, you're not gonna come in here and cut me off, are you, buddy? Buddy, 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 buddy. Oh, man. Dude. Wasn't that bad, but still. Anyways. Anyways, so we had the sunset in front of us here just before. Oh, it was a beautiful sight, except I could hardly see through all the bugs on my window. It's so nice now to be able to actually see where we're going. Too bad it won't stay like this. 
one day I'd still like to pull one of these. They call them pikes, two 53-foot trailers. Just a once or twice. I don't want to do it full time. I mean, if there was nothing else available, I would do it. But I know it's a lot of extra work. You do get paid more because you're pulling two loads, right? So they do make more money. It is a lot of extra work. It's a lot of fun doing that, though. You always got to be careful about where you pull into, like extra careful. Like, you can't just back out of places. You can't back up much at all with those units. And he blinded me right when I looked at him again. He wanted to let me know that it was safe for me to come back into the lane, that I had room. Ugh, so he engages his high beams right in my face. So friendly, so kind, so helpful. Now I can't see. Thank you. Navigate your thumb over to the small button located on the left side of your steering wheel conveniently placed so you don't even have to move your hand and press it and magically your lights turn off just like that does the same job you know without blinding me that's how you signal people it's safe to come over not with your high beams just throwing that out there again until everybody gets it I'm gonna keep talking about that so I, I hate it it's a big thing in Canada it's not very big in the States it almost never happens in the States in Canada, almost, especially in the east, when you go to Ontario East, every single truck that you pass blinds you with their high beams. It's safe to come in, eh? I know you can't see now, but it's safe to come in. Turn the lights off and then on. It signals me just the same without hurting my eyes. Get it? Got it? Good. Now stop it. My biggest pet peeve on the road. Biggest pet peeve, because it's so easy just to click the button on your steering wheel or on your dash turn the lights off and on instead of using your high beams there's no excuse especially on a Volvo like that guy had I've driven Volvos like that before there's no excuse to blind someone to let them know it's safe that's a European thing we don't do that here and then they teach other drivers as they train them that that's the proper way to do it and I'm trying to retrain everybody that there's a better way to do the same thing you should always help your fellow driver out like, it's courteous to let them know, hey, your trailer is passed, you're safe, it's, it's okay to come back in now, you're good. There's just a better way to do it than using your high beams or bright lights. Uh, if I ever buy my own trailer, though, that I can pull around all the time, like, the same trailer, if I ever have my own trailer, I'm going to install lights on my bumper facing backwards that are just as bright as your high beams. You know, it's nice to have lights back there when you're backing up and stuff you know so you can see where you're backing at night and stuff and also for when people are rude enough to blind you when you're trying to navigate a lane change they're trying to help right and they don't know any better because they haven't been taught right so it's only fair to say thank you with the same brightness of lights right you want to blind me I'll blind you back thank you very much you know it's sounds fair to me and what gets me is every time I talk about this subject and bring it up again and raise awareness about it I get people in my comment section who aggressively defend the use of high beams to signal another driver back into the lane and they get angry about it and I understand that that's just the way they were taught that's the way they've been doing things for decades and it's hard to just change a simple little thing like that it's uh, just a habit right it's a habit and uh, back in the day, 20 years ago, it wasn't as big of a deal. The lights weren't that advanced back then. But the trucks that we have nowadays, the lights are so extremely bright and projected. The lights on this truck, like literally, on this Western Star, when I turn my high beams on, I can see signs light up a mile down the road. Like, they are bright. Very bright. I wouldn't want to put these lights in anyone's face. That's why Western Star, along with every other truck manufacturer out there, has conveniently placed a button or a lever or a switch on their trucks, every single one of them, that conveniently cancels your headlights for about two seconds, two to three seconds. And that's why I guess it frustrates me a little bit because 
manufacturers have gone out of their way to create a better way for you to help your fellow driver. That's the main argument that I get in my comment section is that people are like, oh, we're just trying to help. They're just trying to do what's best and be courteous. Totally understand that. But there's a better way. You can still be courteous. I'm not telling you not to help. I'm telling you, you should. You should help your fellow driver back into the lane. It's just courteous to do so, right? But there's a better way, and the truck manufacturers of today have gone out of their way to make these options available for that very reason. That's the only reason that option is here, to cancel your headlights. So, hopefully I get my point across and don't get too many angry comments trying to defend using your high beams. Because in my, in my mind, there's no defense to be made. There's no argument to be made. You shouldn't be using your high beams to signal other drivers back over. Especially when you're driving a late model truck with a fancy little option to cancel the lights instead. That's all I'm going to say about it. That's my rant for today. Every few months I bring it up because it's a topic worth talking about, especially up for us Canadians up here. Because in the States, it's not really that big a problem. It's not really that big a problem in the States. It never really happens to me. It's not a thing that they do. It's a thing that us Canadians do. We're friendly. We like to help each other out and say, Hey, buddy, Derek, come on back in the lane, eh? You're clear, eh? Come on back in here. And that's good. I like that. I like drivers helping me out. You know, in my mind, I don't need it. Like, I got myself out of the lane. I can get myself back into the lane. I don't need your help. But if you do want to help, remember, it's always welcome. It's good to help your drivers out. But there's a better way. Flying J in Southeast Calgary. See if I can find a parking spot. I kind of have my doubts because everything is just packed. Oh, man. If I don't find a spot where am I gonna park they got all this reserved parking here now it's kind of nice if you want to pay you can find a spot and then you get people like this guy in front of me here off to the right who's blocking in all these trucks to the left they turn won't be left able to get on out 116 Avenue Southeast calm then down. turn left calm down I'm gonna see I'd love to oh they got bobtails in there taking up whole spots oh, that's nice we made it here we found a parking spot we're good to go. Now I need to get straight to bed because I got stuff to do first thing in the morning. I got to be at the receiver at 6 a.m. Legally, I have to stay right here for eight hours. Here in Canada, we only have to stop for eight consecutive hours and then we can account for the last two hours to make it a full 10 somewhere throughout my 16 hour day in no less than half hour increments. I know I'm speaking Chinese to some people right now. They're just like, Mew. So I know some of you don't like it when I rant, but it just feels good to get it out sometimes. And that's what the vlog is all about, right? It's about sharing my thoughts, my experiences with you guys, with the internet, and just sort of documenting what's going through my head. And did you have a good birthday today? We saw so many cows, man. What a perfect day to go to Alberta. So many cows and we yelled at them and they looked at us, we even honked at them, and we barked at them, we both barked at them, I barked at them too. Oh yeah. And your mouth is still... I know, you don't like that. Nah. Well, you have nine more days of antibiotics, and if it doesn't go down in swelling, in that amount of time, we'll take you back to the doctor, okay? We'll get you fixed up, don't you worry. We'll get you fixed up. And keep a close eye on that. You're a good boy. You're so tired. You did a good job today. You were barking all day. Usually I would stop him from barking at all the cows and everything. Getting so excited. But it's his birthday. So I just barked with him. Oh, it was fun. My voice is actually a little, a little coarse. <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be delivering here in Calgary in the morning, like I said. And then I don't know. I don't know what's next after that. We'll have to wait and see.